Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Gil Sa, pastor here. Welcome all of you in the name of Christ to our worship service today. Uh, we have a special uh, prayer service, uh, part of service today. Let's be reminded, our God is looking for true worshiper who will worship him, spirit, and truth. So therefore, come, let us bow down in worship, and let us kneel down before our Lord, the Maker. For he is our God, and we are his people of pasture, and the flock under his care. So let us gather our thoughts and our minds in worship in that spirit. I'll give you a few moments of silence to to gather before him together. Yes, God, our rock, our refuge, our resting place, we come to you. Out of another busy week of work, out of our struggles to be meaningful in our world, out of our desire to meet you and know you as the center of our being, we come to you, shepherd of our soul, unmovable rock of our security. In the name of Christ, amen. If you're able, would you stand to read Psalm 145 together in a responsive way? I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commands your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. The people of God, grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. So as we receive God's greeting to us, let us greet one another by passing the peace of Christ.
Good morning. It's, it's wonderful to be able to uh, greet each other and wish each other peace. And now we want to enter into some singing together. We are the family of God, and uh, uh, we're not the singers and you the audience, but we're all the choir, and God is our audience. So let's sing to him. All right. <laughs> The sun comes up, it's 
share with you something I think will be encouraging for you. Um, how do we make our services more meaningful? Um, I have uh, the four P's is just uh, kind of a fun way to remember it. Uh, the first P is to pray. Before you even come to church, pray. Talk to God and say, God, what do you have for me today? And then prepare. Take some time to think through, uh, is there a verse that's going to be covered? Is there a series happening? Ask some questions so that you're preparing your heart for the service. And the third thing is to participate. When you come, I mean, when it's time to sing, really sing. When it's time to say the response song, to, I mean, the words, say that. Um, when it's time to give, really give. I mean, participate so that um, you're worshiping with action. And the last thing is to practice. Whatever has been talked about, uh, practice it during the week. And then you just start over, you pray again. And so I wanna encourage you how to make things a little more meaningful is to go through the four P's. Pray, prepare, participate, and practice. So this next song is a wonderful worship song called um, Revelation Song. So hopefully you know it, and um, we'll just stay seated for this song for now. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. song him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to 
Join with me in our congregational prayer where we join our hearts and minds together. O oh Lord, our God, holy, holy, holy is your name. You are the only true God, the one who created us, who gave us your Son and your Spirit. You also provided us with the means to be in close relationship with you through prayer, fellowship, and spending time in your word. We are truly blessed by all that you have done for us. <clears throat> and we thank you that you know us and that we can praise you and thank you for the many blessings and also petition you in our time of need. Father, we praise you for your handiwork and your power over all of creation. From the heights of the mountains and the depths of the sea and the expanse of the universe, you created all these natural wonders for us to enjoy and explore. We are blessed by our time on, here on this earth and enjoy the seasons of life, to enjoy family, friends, and fellowship. We thank you for meaningful work, leisure time that we can enjoy, and our freedoms to make choices and to worship you. As you have given so much to us, please help us to give back to you as your servants here on this earth, to bless others around us. We pray for the poor and the homeless. We pray for those looking for work and those who are lonely. We seek your help with those who suffer physically, materially, spiritually, and that they may find relief. And we pray that you would bless the caretakers of those who are in need, that their work would be effective. And we pray for our world, especially the areas in war and conflict. We pray that a peaceful solution would be fine to end these matters, and we pray for our Christian brothers and sisters who are persecuted in other parts of the world. Please keep them safe and secure. 
We pray for the missionaries that our church supports, the Lees in Mexico and the Clumpings in Nepal. We pray that you would bless their efforts there. And Lord, we also pray that you would bless our church as we go through this renewal process and the ongoing efforts of the renewal team to support that for the support that they will provide our church in this effort. Please help us to discern your will for us as we seek to continue to worship and serve you at this church. And finally, Father, as part of our worship today, we pray that you would also bless our giving and offerings that we give to the church to support our ministry here and other special causes. And we pray that you would bless the work of City Team Ministries, which is our cause for this month. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Now it's time for our scripture reading today. Um, I believe it'll be on the screen. It's James 5, verse 13 to 16. The prayer of faith. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, as we are about to hear your word preach here, we recognize that unless you shine your light of understanding, we may not truly understand what you have to say for us. And unless you are with me as I deliver your message, Lord, my words may be just man's words. But Lord, use this time that your words will be preached and your people will receive. And your name will be honored. In Christ's name, amen. How many of you like riding a roller coaster? Oh, quite a few of you. I'm surprised. Oh, so you will be then disappointed that the great America Park will be no more in a few years. To be honest, I used to like riding a roller coaster, but not anymore. As I get aged, like somehow it's just causing some stomach ache. But whether you like roller coaster or not, you heard this phrase, life is a roller coaster. So you have no choice but to ride life, what is called, I mean, roller coaster, what is called life. It's true. Life is full of ups and downs. But even our week, just seven days, may have its ups and downs, both externally and internally. Agree? Today's text, the James passage, begins with a couple of questions. Is anyone among you sick? But start, is anyone among you in trouble? Is anyone among you happy? In other words, what condition are you in? Are you up or down? Caused by circumstances of different kinds, you may be experiencing hardship of some sort or happiness of some sort or everything in between. Why is James asking these questions? I believe implied question is this. What do you do when you are down or up? How do you process your life experiences when ups and downs come your way? With who you share your responses? Facing hardship, we tend to, our immediate reaction is to complain. 
or strike out. Or some personalities can bear it with a quiet resignation or just give up. And in happiness, we tend to give ourselves credit for the accomplishments that make us happy and the bounty and forgetting the giver of every good and perfect gift. So after asking these questions, James is urging us to remember God in all situations, good as well as bad, and seek him in prayer and songs of praise. So he's urging us, whatever circumstances you're going through, don't forget God. Involve him. Process with him. Actually, that's heart of worship too. Right? Whether personal or corporate, remembering God and seeking Him personally or together. Then, at times, some of us find ourselves in an extreme condition that is neither external hardship or inner happiness. Here, is there anyone among you sick? Here, that sickness is not just catching a cold or just that kind of, but something unexpected, serious illness is implied here. Then what do we do? The answer is the same. James urge us the same. Seek God. But unlike the two, the conditions mentioned, like in trouble and happiness, there are more specific actions were introduced here. Reaching out for help from church and having elders pray and minister and calling out of the name of Jesus. Of course, this is not of some kind of magical formula or some sort of right that, oh, if you follow this, something automatically will happen. It's not even an exorcism for sure. But here, this is an opening to the power of God for him to intervene. These actions are the, the detailed actions to open ourselves to God, to intervene into the situation. And this is why pastors and elders and whoever represent church visit the sick and um, those who are in big trouble that cannot move out of the bed or house in their homes or in hospital and pray for them. And this is why we set aside a prayer service for healing and restoration today. It is another way of seeking God and processing our life experience with Him for both good and bad, sorrow and joy together as a family of God. And we do this not only out of obedience to his command, but also by faith and hope in his promises. So verses 15 and 16 tell us about the prayer offered in faith and the prayer of a righteous person being powerful and effective. It's virtually the same thing, but two different ways to say it. The prayer offered in faith and prayer of righteous person. Here, we must not think, however, that someone got sick as a result of committing particular sin. When the verse says, if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Let's keep in mind, every sickness of any kind is a consequence of the fall in general. And just like any consequence of fall, sin and evil, sickness is so random and unfair because it can strike anyone. However, in certain cases, sickness may be related to one's wrong choices and offense against God. 
So if that's the case, that should sin be the cause of certain illness, the healing for which the elders pray will not end with the body only. It will be a total healing and include the soul, the forgiveness of sins. So there are two promises, one for the body and the other for the soul. The person will be healed totally. And that's God's purpose of salvation at first place. Total healing of our whole being. So when we pray for each other, especially those suffer sickness of different kinds, we don't demand God as if we deserve this or he owe it to us. We appeal to God's grace and mercy and trusting in his promise of salvation. So we seek to offer the prayer of faith, not just expressing our wishful thinking to feel better. Prayer of faith is simple and yet mysterious. Have you heard this phrase? When man works, man works. But when man prays, God works. Prayer is not a futile exercise. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective, we are told. Here, powerful and effective can be translated powerful in operation. Powerful when it is exercised. Powerful when it is actualized. Prayer is powerful when it reaches God and he answers. So the prayer itself is not necessarily powerful, but God's response to it. We, have heard, we heard after this verse, 5.15, when the prayer offered in faith, the Lord will raise them up for the sick. The prayer of righteous person is effective, powerful, when he reaches God and his answer. But as the title, the prayer of righteous person, you may say, but I don't feel like a righteous person. I feel the same. I think it's safe. I think it's better because you feel like, oh, I'm the righteous person. God better answer my prayer. We are in trouble. We may, however, mistakenly think the powerful and effective prayer is reserved for those super special saints. Righteous person is not necessarily a prophet or especially a holy person, although their examples inspire us and important. The righteous person Biblically speaking, is one who believes in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We are unrighteous on our own, but we become righteous through Jesus Christ in God's eyes. We are clothed in righteousness of Jesus Christ. So the righteous person is any regular member of church like you and me. The person who confessed his or her sins and received the Lord's forgiveness. So in Christ, we are rightly related to God. And there is nothing hindering between God and us. So when we pray, God hears and responds. The prayer of righteous person is the prayer offering faith in Jesus Christ, in his name. So when we pray in Jesus' name, we are saying, we offer all these prayers in complete reliance on Jesus and surrender to his power and his glory. We are saying we have no power. We have nothing on our own. But you have all the power and it is all for your glory because of your love. That's why we can be sure that we can come to God with that confidence. So, 
people of God, whatever condition we are in, let us seek God together in prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Processing our life experience with him and trusting he will hear the cry of our heart and answer according to his good and perfect will. Then one thing for sure, he will give us the peace that transcends our understanding and comfort that we belong to Jesus in life and in death. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you with many different needs. And your words asking, is anyone among you in trouble? Yes, Lord, that's me. Many different kinds. At times, when you ask, is anyone among you happy? Yes, that's me too. There are so many things to be thankful for. And some of us also, Lord, can say, that's me when you ask, is, when, is one, anyone among you sick? And is our loved one a sickness of different sorts, a different degree? Then your word is, Lord, encouraging us to seek you, no matter what circumstance we are in, Lord. And humble ourselves and call out for help. And Lord, you have, Lord, Send your Son and send your Holy Spirit and establish your church to declare your salvation. Lord, we want to do that as we gather together. You reign, you save. And we as a representative, your Son, Jesus Christ, we church want to reach out to this world and to each other with grace and mercy available through Jesus Christ and the power that is also in you. So, Lord, as we enter this time of prayer for each other, listening to each other, we do that together before you. So, Lord, be among us and hear our prayers. In the name of Christ, amen. Let's stand together and sing this beautiful hymn and prepare our hearts. It is well with my soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, Thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well. Let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless state and hath shed his own blood for my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul my sin oh the bliss of this glorious thought 
my sin not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul. We can, um, you know, pray for each other anytime. But we set aside today, especially pray for those who are sick among us, near us in our life, and those of us who have some need, trouble, or whatever. And some of us are more of, are up, joy, Thanksgiving and praise. It is also appropriate to share that too. But often, somehow, praise and lament, sorrows and joys, stay with us side by side. So our life is full of sorrows and joys, sometimes intermingle with one another. So we're going to um, pray together the way that I Envision is after we, I pray and then elders will come forward and read a few scriptures, passage related to this. And I'll, I'm going to give you opportunity to say your own prayer, whether it's written or in the form of just telling us what that is in your heart, whether it's sorrows and joys, concerns, pains, the needs for yourself, or needs in your family or whoever. So within the given time, we're going to spend some time that we share, and then after that, the elders and myself will go to you and with others who are around you and pray for you together. So as we begin, I'd like to offer a prayer of healing in general. But when I say, when I address Jesus Christ, lover of all, when you hear that, please pray together by just saying, bring healing, bring peace. Let us pray. O Christ our Lord, in times past, many servants of yours brought their friends and loved ones to your side, that they might be blessed and healed. So today we bring to your attention those who need your loving touch. Please look on our faith, small as it is, and send your peace. Jesus Christ, lover of all. Bring healing, bring peace. We lift up before you those who suffer from severe physical pain and those for whom the days are long and the nights seem longer. Jesus Christ, lover of all, bring healing, bring peace. For others, Lord, the pain is not of their body, but of their mind and emotions. Some are haunted by past failures. Some feel the searing pain of rejection. Some are shackled with fear and depression. Still others are lonely and alone. Jesus Christ, lover of all, bring healing, bring peace. We also lift before you those who are crippled in soul and spirit, who feel that you have abandoned them or that they are unloved by you. Jesus Christ, lover of all, bring healing, bring peace. We also pray for those who tend the sick, comfort the dying, care for the poor, and befriend the oppressed. 
May their hearts be strong and filled with love and compassion. When they are weary, infuse the strength of your spirit. Jesus Christ, lover of all, bring healing, bring peace. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, who came to suffer among us and to care for those who suffer. Amen. The elders come forward. Unfortunately, uh, Mavis couldn't make it. Uh, he, she and uh, Randy caught COVID, and they told me, uh, gave me uh, the permission to uh, share with you. So our prayers are with uh, Mavis and Randy as well. So we're going to read the four psalm text. First is a plea. Second is promise. Third is plea. And fourth is promise. The psalms are full of our pleas and God's promise. Wonderful that God has included our pleas in his word. It's a perfectly acceptable find that we bring our pleas, not only his promise. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord, how long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones, and not one of them will be broken. Whom have I in heaven but you? The earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Blessed are those who have regard for the weak. The Lord delivers them in times of trouble. The Lord protects and preserves them. They are counted among the blessed in the land. He does not give them over to the desire of their foes. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and restores them from their bed of illness. So now I'd like to give you an opportunity to share and voice your prayer needs, whatever forms that are meaningful to you, comfortable with you. So Tony and Isaac will have this um, handheld mic, so you can just, from your place, you can raise your hand and we'll give you the mic and then you can share. I know a couple of you maybe have written forms, so maybe I will give you opportunity first. Those who have maybe prepared uh, your prayers or your Reflection in writing, maybe that would be first, and then after that, any kind of uh, free and verbal sharing as well. Good morning. Uh, we have recently passed the one year anniversary of the tragedy that came upon our eldest son's family. We'd like to uh, take this time again to thank the congregation for all the prayer, the support that we've received over the last year. Um, <clears throat> we have had tremendous support and it's only by the grace of God that we've been able to pass through this time. Judy has some uh, updates. If people are interested, we can talk later. We want to praise God for the healing for Benjamin and Brianna. 
and we continue to pray that the Lord will walk with this family as they transition into their new reality. God has been very gracious in this time as well. Aaron and Bree have been advocating for Anthony from the beginning. He was 13 then, he's 14 now. He is currently in a state-sponsored boarding house and seems to be on a road to restoration. We ask for prayers for the successful family reunification in the months and the years to come. We have a second prayer request this morning that just came upon us yesterday. My brother Doug and Lisa and their uh, recently moved to Reading and their 27 year old special needs daughter who is perpetually five, Sarah, has been in the hospital for the last five days with a terrible tummy pain. The test yesterday revealed that she has a severely enlarged liver, a colon blockage, and likely congenital heart failure. We ask for prayers for relief from pain and for recovery for Sarah. Yeah. Thank you. After we hear everybody's, then we'll pray together. I'll let I'm Marlette, and thank you, Pastor Sa and Mavis, for inviting me today. Hopeless end and endless hope. Okay, Joyce will read for her. We're ready for her. Is it okay, Alan? Then Joyce will read. Yeah, okay, Joyce can read. A diagnosis of ALS is not one I would recommend. I don't even think. I would give it a half a star, but I have a speedy wheelchair that is entertaining and fun for rides for any kid under five. If I focus on the physical ALS journey ahead of me, it is a hopeless end. There is absolutely nothing, nothing that is good or even remotely good. It is a heinous disease that will strip me of my ability to move, eat, talk and eventually breathe all the while I will have the full capacity of my mind as I said a hopeless end shortly after my diagnosis within a week of it I was reading Hebrews 6 13 to 20 the word that jumped out over and over again was hope I was desperate for hope then I read the same passage in the Passion Translation, a translation I love, focusing on the verses 18 to 19. So it is impossible for God to lie, for we know that his promise and his vow will never change. And now we have run into his heart to, to hide ourselves in his faithfulness. This is where we find his strength and comfort, for he empowers us to seize what has already been established ahead of time, an unshakable hope. We have this certain hope, like a strong, unbreakable anchor holding our souls to God himself. What hope do I hold on to? God's promises, his truth. God's faithfulness, God's strength, God's comfort, God's plan unshakable hope, strong hope, unbreakable anchor, hope that has no end, endless hope, the anchor of my soul. I loved all of this so much at the age of 55, 
I got a tattoo to remind me of this daily. Corn flowers that represent ALS. They are fragile on the outside, but strong on the inside. That's every person with ALS. Wheat to remind me of God's provision and his faithfulness. An anchor to represent my faith. All of the plants coming out of the anchor like a vase because everything is held together by this unbreakable anchor and unshakable hope. I don't know what next month or next year looks like. I don't know how long God is planning me to be on this earth, but I am so grateful for the hope I have in eternal life and healing. That's my endless hope. Please know that I am grateful and blessed by your many prayers, notes of encouragement, and financial support through the GoFundMe page set up by SJCS. Thank you for being the hands and feet of Jesus. Thank you. As I said, we're gonna just gather all these sharing at the end and then pray together. Anyone else? Yeah, <clears throat> good morning. Uh, my wife and I are going through some difficult times right now. We uh, sold our house to Home Investors um, in, in Frisco, Texas. The closing is set for December 1st, and we have less than two months to find a rental place. Uh, we don't have the option to rent to own or to buy due to our, our credit history. It's a really difficult situation. Hopefully we'll find a place before the end of the year. Um, landlords are pretty picky, so it's going to be quite challenging. The other thing is I've been apart from my wife for now close to a year and a half due to employment here in San Jose. And I'm praying that God will lead me back to my family, whether it's here or back in Texas, and that I'll find, find something uh, interesting. It's very difficult at my age uh, to find something. I've had many interviews and uh, nothing is materialized and it's quite discouraging but for now I'll stay here in the San Jose area um, and hang on to what I have and travel back and forth uh, when needed to, to visit family I appreciate your prayerful support during this this time thank you thanks Jerry we'll pray with you anybody else Tina, so glad yeah. to see you. Well, I'm so happy and surprised I'm back. I didn't think I was going to make it this time. I went through a lot. And I had a lot of weeks and I could not breathe. But the Lord brought me here. Thank you so much. Maybe for those of you who don't know, uh, Tina had... Um, operation a couple weeks ago, a stent uh, placement in her heart. So it is amazing, miraculous that she, she's able to come and join with us today. But we'll continue to pray for your continuing uh, recovery and strength. And uh, the back, and then I have a prayer for my family, and it's my siblings, and I would like to share this prayer with you as you pray with me. Almighty God, I pray for my family where there has been much discord, beginning with drug addiction so many years ago, then moving on to other issues, causing resentment, bitterness, jealousy, false accusations, and blaming others resulting in estrangement. Father, you know all the details. I know that it is your will for my family, my siblings, to be reconciled and restored. I pray that you heal all the wounds in our hearts and bring unity, harmony, love, peace, and forgiveness 
to each family member involved. To let go of untold truths in order not to cause more pain and hurt. Thank you, Father, for you hear my prayers, for your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness. I am expecting my family, my siblings, to be restored again in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Then I would like to share another prayer for some, some friends, and particularly one who we prayed for a year ago today. My uh, daughter-in-law's oldest niece, a year ago today, suffered a massive stroke, Emma Kate Rinker, and we prayed for her. The doctors did not expect her to survive this stroke. And it's, it's been a long road for her, a difficult recovery. She is still living and she is now taking a few steps. She's in a wheelchair, God, you know her circumstance. And I pray that you will continue to heal her and give her strength. She has a beautiful voice and she has shared it with so many to sing at so many different things and a praise team at her church. And also a few other members of family friends and friends of mine. Alice, who was just diagnosed with Parkinson's, is on medication and it is helping to improve. My next door neighbor who is suffering numbness and lack of strength. She was a young mother of two. She's an obstetrician at Kaiser Hospital, and I pray for healing for her. For my friend Joyce from childhood who has cancer, but it looks like now she is in remission. For a friend Miriam who is from Iran, and there is so much discord there and uh, hostile things going on, afraid for her family and for the freedom they don't have. And then I pray for Carol Van Sant, who, and also for my brother Willie, who many years ago suffered from polio. Carol was nine, Willie was five. Carol has been suffering with polio syndrome now for several years, and Willie is beginning to feel the weakness in his legs and walking. So God, I pray that you will keep all of these loved ones in your care and bring healing to them and strength for each day. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Agnes. Uh, continue prayers for our son, Benjamin, and a uh, path forward for him and for his strength for John and I. No. Kirk and Marion couldn't come, but Laura, daughter, is here, so maybe you can... Um, they wanted to come, but the condition was not such that they could come. But here is a picture of Kirk and Marion Sullivan and Laura. Say a few words about their yeah, that's, that's my um, parents. Um, this Their anniversary, July 3rd. Um, and uh, I just wanted to ask for some prayer for them. Um, just some clarity to figure out what we'll do for my dad who has Alzheimer's and it's just getting worse and um, hard for my mom and um, tomorrow we have a meeting with um, home health care and just to pray that um, the meeting goes well and that they can find some solutions to the, all their problems that they have right now in Jesus name I pray amen Um, Rich, you want to say a few words? Or Fern? I'm asking prayers for uh, Rich, who uh, has suffered with arthritis for many, many years. And of course, it's not getting any better. <laughs> and we are grateful for our church family and our own family too, and some of the family members are here today. And we celebrated his uh, 88th birthday this week with our children and had a wonderful time. And we thank you for all your prayers that you extend to us, for us, 
each day and for me too because it's hard to take on the responsibility of everything now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> I uh, guess I better pray for my wife then because she needs prayers also. She is um, uh, stooping over quite a bit and um, I'm sure that's very painful too. But uh, I ask for prayers for myself. Uh, my body just does not want to cooperate with me what I want. So I guess uh, God has given me some uh, a burden to bear and it's been for many, many years already. And I ask that he would take this pain from me and that he would um, see to it that I would have less stress in my life, which I don't get very much because I've got a wonderful wife that takes care of me. And I thank you, thank her for this. I thank you for my children uh, that have been over to uh, see me in this date because it uh, is also my birthday uh, on the 3rd. So I, I thank uh, the Lord for giving me a good, good birthday. So bless, I ask blessings on this, the whole church now, that everybody may get along well together, that each and every person in here might have love for each and other, uh, everybody else. Thank you. Maybe this may be a good time to also give you a quick update about Norman Brower, who's our member who's been fighting with um, leukemia for many years. So here is the most latest update uh, written by his sister Tiffany. Norman has had a very productive last few days. He's making mark, marked uh, improvement all the time. The NG tube came out the other day and he's able to eat better. He continues to work hard with physical therapy and occupational therapy. He has been told that the target date for being released from the hospital is this coming Monday, November 7th. Once he's discharged, he and Jerry will stay together in San Jose until he reaches the 100 days post-transplant. Thank you all for the prayers and encouragement through his journey. He is so excited to be able to go home soon. Thank you for all your prayers for Norman. I wish we have a little more time to share. I'm sure like such a I mean, small group like this, but we have so many needs. And we just touch barely just you know, some physical and emotional, but there are much more. Uh, at the end, as an end, I want to just pray this for the sake of not only myself, for any of you who have adult child, who maybe grew up in the church, but somehow walk away, or are struggling right now. Even if it's not your own children, maybe some young people that you know, or young women you know. Here is a lament for prodigal adult child. Lord, I'm hurt. Nowadays, whenever I think of my child, I feel pain in my heart. It caused me to stop and be quiet, stirring up different emotions inside, mostly sadness and despair. Lord, I feel I'm losing him or her, if not already lost her or him. It's the same child, but different. There is a sense of loss. I realize I'm grieving for the lost dream for my child. I didn't know I have it. I don't even know what dream I had for her, but I must have something because I feel it's lost. Lord, I keep telling myself it's not the end of story yet. The prodigal son returned home after all. Will my child return too? Maybe, or maybe not. I'm realistic as well as hopeful. 
But even if my child will return, will I be as happy as the father in the parable just because he returned? What about the lost dream, the damage, the hurt, and the pain? Why does this, ha- why does this happen at the first place? Did he have to leave? Did I somehow contribute it? I struggle with a sense of failure and shame too. It's getting dull as time goes though. Is it a good thing? Am I supposed to do something more? Lord, I know I need to pray more. I know I need to process my pain with you. I know I need to direct my emotions to you. I know you welcome them. I know this is and will be deepening my faith and forming my character. Thank you for these knowledges that are true and real, although they don't lessen my hurts. I'm choosing to continue my life journey with faith, hope, and love. I'm choosing to put my trust in you for our future. Lord, I need your grace to love my child well. I need your grace to love myself well. I need your grace to love others well. So right now, our elders and I will go to you, those who especially share. And even if you haven't shared, maybe you can just find people who share. Why don't we pray for them? Uh, Unless you feel uncomfortable, the elders and I will pray with you, pray over you with anointing oil for those people who have expressed uh, the need for prayer. So we're going to do that right now. So those of you who have shared, you will receive prayer with people around you and our elders and pastors. And those of you who have not shared, you can either sit in your seat and pray for the need that you know in your heart to God, or you can go closer to the people who share so that we can pray together. Just a few minutes of prayer. God of life, God of comfort. Why, O Lord, why we cry out? Alone, afraid, in fear, in loss at times. How long, O Lord, how long we cling to you in hope, even as we grasp for hope. 
So grasp us in your loving embrace through Jesus Christ, who endured the cross for our sake, who can turn our sickness into health and our sorrow into joy. In his precious holy name, amen. I wanted to share a song with you. I'm, I'm uh, doing a new album, and this song is uh, one of the songs on the album that's just written. It's called I'll Worship With My Life, right out of Romans 12.1. It says, um, I urge you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. So I uh, hope it's encouraging for you. My God and refuge, my Savior and my Lord. My living water, the healer of my soul. Beauty and strength, wisdom and joy, creator of all I see. Mercy and hope. Forgiveness and grace, you lavish your love on me. Thank you, Lord. I'll worship with my life to be a living sacrifice, an offering to glorify you. I'll worship with my life, and more than all the words I say, I follow you in every way and love you with my life. You're welcome. So we're going to receive communion. So although we pray for specific needs of specific people, we must recognize Every one of us need God's grace and his healing touch for our life. So he prepared this meal for us, for our souls, healing and nourishment, so that we can be encouraged and strengthened to face another week, another month, and the rest of the year, and facing the future that is unknown and uncertain. So we give thanks to God the Father that our Savior Jesus Christ who made this just not only just physical meal but what it represents through his suffering and his death on the cross that our salvation is available. So he gave us this memorial of his sacrifice until he comes again. So at his last supper the Lord Jesus took and when he had given thanks, and he broke it and said, this is the body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, this is my blood, the covenant, the new covenant in my blood. So do this in remembrance of me. So whenever we can, we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, we proclaim our faith as sign and seal in this sacrament. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Lord, our God, send your Holy Spirit so that this bread and cup may be for us, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we and all your saints be united with Christ and remain faithful in hope and love. Gather your whole church, O Lord, into the glory of your kingdom. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite um, Fred and Joyce to prepare. So congregation of Jesus Christ, the Lord has prepared his table for all who love him and trust in him alone for their salvation. So we believe that when we receive the elements together as a body of Christ, he is present and spiritually nourish us. So would you come forward, if you can, and stand uh, making one line and receive uh, both and go back to your seat and then we're gonna take together. But those of you who can stay or rather stay in your seat, I will come with the element to serve you. body of Christ for you and blood of Christ for you. People of God, for the, the gift of God, for the people of God. We bless you, O God, for gifts of bread and cup, for sustaining us in hope, 
every day of our lives. We pray for your strength to prepare us now for your service as we offer to you lives of witness and worship in the world you have made. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Let's, let's close with a song, just the chorus of Bless the Lord. Why don't we stand together and sing together. Bless the Lord of all my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy Like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. Your announcement uh, today. Immediately after worship, there will be a worship team meeting. So uh, all the worship team members, please join us. And the next Sunday, we're going to have a, another monthly church potluck. However, the church will provide meat. So you just bring side dish of some sort or dessert. So next Sunday, and um, there will be a, also um, the table uh, discussion if, afterward, if you are willing to stay. And maybe you notice on the way in, the city team um, donation barrel outside. So during this month and this holiday season, uh, the information is here. So we, we want to fill that up and then we'll give back to our city team to distribute and the offering as well. So receive God's parting blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, and he turn his face toward you, be gracious to you. Now and forevermore, amen. Go in peace. <laughs>